everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Vivek, and as you can see, that is my full name, Vivek Mabubani. Don't try to say it. It's OK. <laughs> Most people cannot pronounce my name. It's always fun. So I just want to start by telling you a few things about myself. First of all, I am Indian, OK? I am not a terrorist. <laughs> Don't let this fool you, OK? Indian, trust me. However, I actually was uh, born and raised in Hong Kong. And growing up in Hong Kong, I went to local Chinese schools growing up. So I said, Gong Gong Nong Waga. And it's a lot of fun, right? You know, when you can speak Cantonese and people look at your face, you know, they don't realize it. It's like a, it's like a superpower, right? <laughs> I'm taking the train, people are talking, I'm like, mm, I know what you're saying, you know? But the, the thing for me is that I'm also a self employed web designer. I work for myself. Again, I'm Indian. IT, I have to do IT, right? <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> so I, I'm a self-employed web designer, and also I'm a stand-up comedian. What that means is that during the day, I'm sitting at a computer working, you know, code and everything. At night, I'm in front of people telling jokes, hey, hey, laugh, you know. So that's my life. Right? However, what I want to really share about uh, myself today is that I'm different. And I realize that everyone is different. And when you know that you're different, you will start to realize that your life is unique to yourself. Right? For example, for me, uh, when I was growing up in primary school, now primary school, it was an all boys school. Now I was the only foreigner in the class. So I remember the first day of school, I went into class, and you know, one student raised his hand. He's like, <laughs> Why is there a girl, you know? And I was like, why am I a girl? <laughs> and then he told me, because I have long eyelashes. <laughs> so that day, after school, I went home. I took a pair of scissors. I told my mother, mommy, say goodbye to your daughter. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be a boy. And she laughed. She's like, you are too young. You don't understand. If a boy, you don't cut. OK, just remember that. <laughs> right? So th there was a lot of these weird things, you know. Um, they would even call me E.T., you know, like an alien all the time. And the funny thing is that in school, uh, with my friends and everything, I used to play with them. But they, they used to be um, mean to me in a very weird way. They would bully me, but in a very weird way. Like, when we were young, uh, around six, seven years old, now, in an old boys' school, the only thing you do is you talk rubbish and you fight. That's all you know how to do, right? So when I was growing up, there was a game called Street Fighter. Now, Street Fighter is you pick two characters. You know, you could be Mr. Brazil and Mr. Japan, and they fight against each other. So every time they're like, hey, let's fight the Indian guy, you know? <laughs> we became good friends, though. It was very good, you know? I, mean, I was like, hey, pff, uh, I love you, my friend. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. Now, going to secondary school, this was a lot of fun as well, because in secondary school, again, all boys school, I don't know, my parents, they wanted me to make sure I, I like boys. I don't know. So. <laughs> All boys school, secondary school, I went into class, right? First day in my classroom, I'm a student in front of me, he turns to me, he looks at me and he's like, say <laughs> chai right? And you know what, I, I looked at him and I was like, they <laughs> tongo longa. Right? And then we became really good friends. We really, we really did, you know? It, it's, university was a lot of fun, you know, that was the time when my life would change, when you would discover yourself, you know. And when I got to university, like I said, I just understood who I was. It was a real struggle, because in, in secondary school, I would have a challenge where I didn't know who I was, you know, the girls would see me, ah, I don't wanna, ah, and they would run away, you know. It was very hard, but in un university, things completely changed. All of a sudden, everybody wanted to be, be my friend. Because I studied in a place called uh, Creative Media, in a school called Creative Media, and we had a lot of filming. Now, my friends, my classmates, they thought, how can we get better grades, right? And now, in a film, if you want to get a good grade, you want to be international level, <laughs> right? How do you make a film international level? By having a foreigner as your actor. <laughs> foreigner, <laughs> right? So all, every movie, they would always say, Viv, Viv, come, come film, come, one, 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 your shot. And the thing is, they would love to be my friend because they can look cool, you know? Imagine you're with me hanging out, and another person says, wow, you're so cool. You have a foreigner friend. You know, your English must be so good. <laughs> but they don't realize, <laughs> right? 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 
So it's a lot of fun for me because I have two identities. I see a world in both sides as a local Hong Kong Chinese person, as a Hong Kong foreigner. I see both ends of the, of the game, right? Now, the thing is, though, what I realized is in my whole life, one problem I could never avoid was people's first impression of me. Just like this, you know, when they see me, either they say, or, you know, it, any, it, or, or they're like, oh, you got it. You know, they'll, they'll try to guess. Let me just clarify something. Just because I'm Indian doesn't mean I know yoga, okay? <laughs> when I was born, I did not come out like that, okay? <laughs> Let me clarify that, okay? So what I realized is in my whole life, the one thing I could never control was people's first impression of me. Now, people have an impression of me simply because you have stereotypes, right? You know, you look at my face and immediately in your head you're thinking this and this and this and this, right? However, in my whole life, the way I used to face this wasn't to maybe educate people, wasn't to avoid these people, but the key was if you give them your first response. Now you realize, remember in secondary school, my classmate, he was like, I need them fooling, right? And I was like, let's go longer, right? When I gave that first response, he realized, wait a second, you're not what I think you are. You know, I have this stereotype of what you must be, but you're not like that, you're just another human being. And when you realize that everyone is a human being, you don't really care anymore, right? Stereotypes don't mean anything. So one thing I really always remember in my life is that it's always a first response. When you meet people, it's not their impression of you, it's your first response based on whatever impression they have of you originally. You may break the way they think. For example, you can see in my PowerPoint it says, you know, impression, then you've got the stereotype, then you've got the response, and then you change the, the incorrect perception. People have a misunderstanding, right? So when you give them a response that breaks that misunderstanding, it opens their mind, and they realize, whoa, I never thought of it that way. So coming back, I want to give you a good example. Now, I used to use this concept of first impression and also people's stereotypes, and I used to always play it to my advantage. I used to make the most of this. So in secondary school now, you see I have a, I have a goatee, right? I've been growing this for a long, long time, all right, since secondary school. So if you look at this picture, I'm over there, in case you didn't realize, the only one foreigner. Now, if you look at my face, <laughs> you will see I had the goatee back then. Now, this is in 2001. So that's around 12 years ago, right? Now, in school, we had a rule. You cannot have facial hair. No facial hair. So one day, my teacher told me, hey, you can't, you can't grow this. It's not possible. So I was thinking, OK, you know, I can play with my, his impression of his stereotypes of who I am, right? So I told my teacher, I was like, oh, I'm sorry. It's my religion. <laughs> He's like, OK, yeah, grow some more. <laughs> uh, yeah. It helped me a lot, right? So the key is I knew he had this stereotype. Oh, a foreigner, maybe he has a different religion, different and you know, all that stuff. So I could play that to my advantage. Now, for me, I'm actually a stand-up comedian by, by, by night, and I love stand-up comedy. Growing up, I used to watch a lot of famous comedians. Like, you might recognize some of them. You know, there's Jerry Seinfeld, there's Wong Ziwa, there's, there's all these other, other famous people. And the key is that you might have encountered comedy in your life without realizing it, right? And the thing for me is that I always admire people who could just make people laugh. So, for example, I do a lot of stand-up comedy in American-style comedy. And the difference is my objective is to make you laugh, right? American-style stand-up comedy and, and a lot of Chinese or Hong Kong-style comedy is different. American-style, I want you to laugh. I don't care what my content is. In Hong Kong, the common thing is my content, and I, you, you laugh as I tell you my content. In China, you have a lot of like Seung Sing, you know, two people talking. You've got cross talk, all these kinds of things. But the point is, people want to laugh, right? I grew up watching a lot of stand-up comedy, and I admired these people. And I told myself, before I die, I want to try stand-up comedy one time. And one time I saw an ad in a, in a newspaper, and it said, you know, comedy competition. And I thought, OK, this is my opportunity. I'm, I'm going to try it. And ever since then, five years ago, I tried it, I had fun, and I've been doing it for five whole years now. It's a lot of fun. Now, what I want to really share with you is that people always have an idea that, wait, so are you talented? Are you gifted? Is there something special? Why are you funny? I'm not funny, you know? But the key is, remember one thing. Humor is actually just life in a new angle, right? You think about it. Growing facial hair, that's not funny, right? However, saying it's my religion, that's funny, right? <laughs> so a lot of things that uh, make people laugh is simply telling life in a new angle. So what I want to do is I want to share with you guys why we generally laugh at stuff. So first of all, like I said, the new perspective, you know, seeing things from a new angle. When you see me and you see me as a yoga teacher, that might be funny, you know. Other thing is like there's another thing called contrast. Whenever you talk about something and you suddenly change the direction, 
that surprise, it, it, it's very funny sometimes, you know. You might say something and suddenly change, you know. Like people tell me, oh, you're Indian. You must be poor. <laughs> and I get angry. I'm, like, I'm not poor. I'm cheap. <laughs> I have the money. I don't spend it. That's all, right? So that's the key, is that I, the, the contrast all of a sudden changing. Now, secondly, the, I mean, thirdly, there's also wordplay, right? A lot of sexy get. Now, this is the one that people always kind of go like, oh my God, don't say that. I hate that, you know? Like, but however, this is a way of making people laugh. Uh, one good joke I heard, this is not mine, this is a, a joke someone told me. Um, they were like, oh, Aviv, Aviv, I'm like, what hair? What? I don't know. I don't know. He's like, normal. <laughs> Like, oh, because normal, memo, I get it, ha, 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 go die. You know, I don't like it. <laughs> but people still laugh, right? Now, the next thing is that every joke should always be a kind of a surprise. If you already could guess the answer, it's not that funny anymore, right? However, sometimes the surprise factor is in the key. But usually, you want it to be surprised so people don't know what you're going to say. So, for example, let me give, give you a good example. I have a joke of my own as well that I say, you know, uh, 我小時候呢,就我的中文唔係好好嘅啫。咁呢我就好多時我例如去球場玩啊,俾人哋傾偈同人哋同我傾偈嘅時候呢,可能有啲字有啲俗語啊,我唔識㗎嘛,係咪?
and then I give you the punchline, which is yun do, and that's the punchline. And then you're like, oh, that's funny, that's funny, you know. But if I saw, if I told you something like, you know, 你知唔知咧喺香港咧識講中文同埋做一個外國人咧係好慘噶，係啊，真係好慘噶，係啊。Right? It, I gave you a setup, but you're like, okay, and uh, that's it. You can't laugh. Right? But if I told you, 你知唔知喺香港咧識講中文而同埋做一個外國人咧好慘，因為成日都令人失望噶，知唔知？啲人見到話，哇哇，我同佢講英文幾好，英我英文一一，嘿嘿 ，man， 喲喲喲 ，you know。跟住我就話，中文得噶啦，唔使咁樣。跟住見人哋見到就嚇、啊，中文誒、呃、翻版唔要呢、這個<笑> ，right？ 令人失望。So the key is that you got to give them a setup, a story, a situation. Give them a little tension, get their attention, and they're like, yeah, and then, and you give them the punchline. That's how you do it. That's, a, that's basically a joke. That's as simple as that. However, before you have a joke, you always start with something interesting. Think about it. If I told you, hey, I want you to go out and find 10 funny things in your life, you will find that very difficult. Because like, wow, is this funny? Is that funny? I don't know. It's very difficult. But if I told you, go out and find 10 interesting things, all of a sudden, yeah, okay, a lot of things are interesting. Because to be interesting, it's very personal. It's your opinion. However, to be funny, you need people to agree with you. That's funny, that's funny, right? So if I tell you, do a simple exercise, find interesting things in your life, you will suddenly find out that your life is very interesting. There are a lot of funny, interesting things. For example, what I want, what I want you guys to do, is like after today's talk, really, make this a good ex exercise. You'll find this a lot of fun. Even for me, I do this all the time. So for example, let's try this. After the, the talk and everything today, just find one interesting sign, all right? Just one interesting sign. You might already have found it, but look out for it. You will notice a lot of th interesting signs. Let me share some of that I found, right? First of all, I saw a sign at, at the basketball court that said, no dunk shots. Who is dunking in Hong Kong, right? Is that a big pro Who can dunk over here, <laughs> right? No, exactly, right? No one's dunking. Why is this a problem? We don't need a sign, you know? Like, don't fly to the moon. We don't need a sign like that, right? No one's doing it. Secondly, I saw this one that I really like because it has the keyword bao se. <laughs> now, here in Hong Kong, slang term for bao se means to go to the toilet, <laughs> yeah, right? And I saw that on the street. I'm like, is, is this a toilet? Are they making it? I'm, I'm very confused, right? Now, another very interesting sign, if you look carefully, over here at the sign, it says, danger, deep water. <laughs> that water is not deep, <laughs> all right? It barely comes to my ankle. I don't know who is getting drowned in that water, but you should grow taller, <laughs> right? That's quite, that's a really intense sign, right? Now, the next one, this I really liked. Like, I was leaving Lo Wu, right, coming back to Hong Kong, and I saw a sign that said, please leave the country by lift. <laughs> I have to leave by lift. Not escalator, not stairs, by lift. I'm scared, I'm like, where's the lift? There's no lift, I, I can't, I'm stuck here, you know? So it's signs, you know, you might start noticing interesting signs. Now the next one is that if you start noticing interesting pictures, you'll see that there are a lot of interesting pictures around you. But the key is, when you notice interesting ones, look at them and try to think of a story behind it. Like, why are they doing this? Why is it interesting? Ask yourself that. So let me share with you. I saw a sign to a toilet, right? Male and female. This is for people with one leg, <laughs> all right? I don't understand who designed this, but he was probably thinking people walk like this. <laughs> I'm gonna take a toilet break, yeah. <laughs> what kind of a toilet is this, man? Right? And then I, I saw another one. Now, this was at the Hong Kong International Airport. Now, this looks very normal, right? No big deal sign and everything, but if you look closely, you will see that the female sign, she's kind of embarrassed, she's like, it's a toilet, <laughs> this way. Hong Kong International Airport, I'm this is true, this is really there. So you start noticing all these funny things going on, right? Now next thing, you start, once you have this habit, you'll start noticing funny anything, anything can be funny to you. I was at um, Singapore Airport, now this is key. Singapore Airport, I saw a sign, right? Look at all these things, signed on a gym and lounge, gym. Who is going to the airport <laughs> for exercise? <laughs> and is there a shower? I don't see a shower, I just see a gym. I, I don't want to be sitting next to the guy who's like, oh, I just had a workout. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm a bit sweaty, it's okay. You know, yeah. <laughs> no, no gym, no gym. We don't want any exercise, no air conditioning. That's all we want, right? So there's another sign, I was like, that's pretty interesting. Now remember this, when I saw the sign, it was like, gym, interesting. Then I made my own story up, who's going to the gym? And if you go to the gym, what do you do? Do you shower, do you not? What are you doing? Do you have a personal trainer? You know, do you, how long do you work out? What's the, yeah, what does it work, you know? 
Next one is I saw a car. Now, when I say interesting in, in anything, you start noticing things just in general. Now, when I saw this car, okay, Mr. T, meh. Okay, interesting, okay, that's about it. I, I can't find anything funny. However, a few days later, I saw another car that said Mr. V. <laughs> now, I realized one thing is that Mr. T and Mr. V might be brothers, I don't know. <laughs> I'm making up in my head. However, what I could conclude is Mr. V is richer than Mr. T. <laughs> Why? Because Mr. T has a BMW and Mr. V has a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> I think he's more successful, right? So the key is this, is that you must start noticing that everything in life becomes interesting because now you're noticing the interesting things in life. So uh, let me share one last point that I really like is that one day I was all of a sudden told by one of my audience in my shows that I was in an exam paper. I was a topic in an exam paper. Do you realize how this is dangerous for my life? <laughs> Imagine you took this exam and you decided, you know what, I'm going to answer this question. And if you answered the question and you got zero points, you will come find me and tell me, you know you, you made me fail my exam and now I sleep on the streets. Okay, so remember that. You know how worried I'm like, please, just, just, I might not even get full marks for this. This is my question. They might say, oh, wrong answer. I'm like, I am him. <laughs> how can I make this answer wrong, right? So what I want to really encourage you guys to do is that have a habit of noticing interesting things. By noticing interesting things, you will notice funny things out of these, these interesting things. And all you have to really think about is like, if every day you notice one interesting idea, idea or item or whatever, interesting anything, it could be anything, just have this idea. Walk around every day one inter interesting idea. You'll realize that in one week you have seven, right? Now in seven you may not find one funny, that's okay. But in one month on average you'd have around 30. Right? Maybe in 30 you'll have one funny idea. Okay, even if you don't have that, that's fine. But in the one year, you'll have 300 something ideas. And I guarantee you, in 365 ideas, or funny or interesting ideas that you have, one of them will make you laugh, and one of them will make your friends laugh. And when you can make your friends laugh, you're the man, <laughs> all right? You're gonna, be, you're gonna be famous and popular, and one day you will be in an exam paper and I will be taking the test. I'm like, uh, that guy. Uh. <laughs> so good luck, guys. I, I really hope you guys have an idea. Just keep writing interesting ideas. Just notice the interesting things in life, and you will find something funny, and one day you'll be a comedian and become famous and rich. Otherwise, you'll be on the street sleeping. So that's my time. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you have a good day. Thank you.